Welcome to the week 5 application video. The week 5 application requires you to run a one-way ANOVA or a two-way ANOVA. This video will address the one-way ANOVA which I think is the much simpler procedure for you to run. The one-way ANOVA is a statistical test that compares the group means or the group average for three or more groups. It is a logical extension of the independent samples t-test which compares two groups but there will be research situations where you're going to compare more than two groups. When you are confronted with that situation you will use the one-way ANOVA. Again it is a simple extension of the independent samples t-test. Now in the text there's an example where they are comparing a vitamin regimen, meaning individuals that take vitamin A, vitamin B, or vitamin C, to see if it minimizes the number of days with the cold. Across here at the top, we'll see we have vitamin A, vitamin B, and vitamin C. Vitamin is the independent variable or the factor. And this factor has three levels or three groups, A, B, and C. The quantitative or scale score that we are going to be comparing these vitamin levels on would be the mean score for the number of days with the cold. Here we can see that we have a difference in the averages or a difference in the mean. Vitamin A being 6, vitamin B being 5, vitamin C being 4.8. But the ANOVA is going to determine if this difference in the means are statistically significantly different. Again, this is doing no more than the independent samples t-test, but it allows us to compare more than two levels of a variable. Now, the scales of measurement again are very important and it's important in any statistical test that you do. You must select the appropriate scale of measurement. Again, just like the independent samples t-test, the independent variable for the ANOVA or factor, you'll see in SPSS that the area that you will put the variable in is actually labeled as factor. So factor and independent variable mean the same thing in the ANOVA. Again, it must be nominal. Again, it must be categorical. It cannot be numerical and it must have three or more levels. In this case the factor is vitamin and it has three levels A, B, and C. Do not confuse vitamin A, vitamin B, and vitamin C as being three variables. It is only one variable but that variable has three levels and we are comparing the levels of the variable to see if there is a statistically significant difference in a dependent variable and in this case the dependent variable must be numerical or scale or we call it quantitative and that is the number of days with the cold as you can see number it is a scale score so again the independent variable or the factor must be nominal which is categorical and the dependent variable must be scale so we use a nominal scale of measurement for the factor, a scale or a quantitative level of measurement for the dependent variable. Now we will move on to SPSS to run the one-way ANOVA and then we will also cover doing the appropriate APA results write-up. I now have the Lesson 25 Data File 1 open, which is the data set for the example that we're about to cover. And we're going to do the one way and over again, comparing the three groups. As you can see in the data view, you'll see we have numbers listed as 1, 2, and 3 in this column. Now, remember that we talked about how we had to label and assign values to these numbers. Again, what you would see in your data set that if you went to your variable view 
And if you click on that particular variable, which is your grouping variable, in this case, we're looking at the, um, the vitamin C group or the vitamin A, B, or C grouping. If we looked at the values column and clicked in the bottom right where the three little dots are, we'll see how it's labeled. One, two, and three. Notice that we have three groups instead of two. If it was two, this would be appropriate for an independent samples t-test. But here we have three groups. which lets us know that this is appropriate for the ANOVA. And you will find this values area populated when that variable, again, is a nominal variable or a categorical variable. When you have a categorical variable, you must identify the categories. And here the three categories are placebo, I guess which would be vitamin A group, low is vitamin C, and a high vitamin C dose. Okay, and that's the way they have it labeled. So it's important to understand behind the scenes so that you can see what the one, the two, and the three stand for. And here are the difference in scores in the days on um, with the cold. Um, and this would be the quantitative dependent variable that we're comparing them on. Okay, so let's jump right into the procedure. We were going to analyze. We would select general linear model, and this is identified right in the text, univariate. Now remember, the dependent variable is the quantitative variable. And you'll notice again, too, that the quantitative or the scale variable has the scale or the ruler. You'll know that that's a scale or numerical variable. That goes in a dependent variable box. You will notice too that the fixed factor, remember I said it's not independent variable, it's called a fixed factor. And that's where the vitamin C treatment will go, the three groups of vitamin C treatment. Now notice that you see the three little balloon circles, that indicates that it's a nominal, so we have the categories, the nominal variable. That will go into the fixed factor box, okay? You then click options. Now, we want to bring the grouping variable over or the factor because we want it to show us the, the, the mean score for each uh, level of the factor. We'll click to bring it over. Now, down here in the display, um, we want to select the homogeneity test. Remember that the uh, equal variances is a key um, test of the assumption. The estimates of effect size. You don't have to calculate the effect size for the uh, ANOVA as you had to do in the t-test. The SPSS procedure will automatically do that for you. And it tells us to select the descriptive statistics for the variables. Okay, again, I'm just following the steps in the book. And you would do this for your applicable data set. You click continue. Now, the next thing is post hoc test. We click on that. Now, again, we have three groups. But... Think about it now. If we have three groups and the ANOVA comes out to be significant, it doesn't tell us between which pairwise groups the difference lies. For example, group A or vitamin A may be significantly different from vitamin C, but it may not be statistically significantly different from group B. Or group B and group C may be different and they may not be different from group A. So we have to drill down further into the data because we have more than two groups. If it was just two groups, we know that the difference is between those two groups. But as we start getting more groups, we want to know specifically what groups do the differences lie. That's the purpose of the post hoc test. So we bring the grouping variable or the factor over to the post hoc area. And in the text, you'll just select what the text tells you to, t to select. We won't go into depth in this, but you'll take the two key test. And it says select the REGWQ, which will select that. Now, if the equal variances is not assumed or if that assumption is violated, we then will read and report the results for the done it using done it C test. So just like we had to report either the statistics for if the uh, assumption of equal variances was violated in the t-test we also have to do it for the ANOVA but here if the equal variances is not assumed we have the choice of tests we're going to select the Dunnett's c-test so you don't really need to understand at this point what all this is but you need to know that if the variances is not assumed that we'll report the Dunnett c-test statistics for statistical notation you click continue 
and then you simply click the OK button. And what you'll have will be the results of the One Way ANOVA. We are now going to go into another video to discuss what the results of the One Way ANOVA means. So we will have a part two to the video that we will look at next.